All right, so we have our Pokemon index application and we see right here we have Bulbasaur and we have the Bulbasaur sprite and some skills, um, but we're not able to click any of these and get another request from the API to receive this data. And so in this example, we're just demonstrating why Reactive is a great way to receive data. And we're not going step by step exactly like the last application because there's a lot to it and we want to keep this video kind of short. I'm going to step you through the application, explain what's going on, and then we're going to go ahead and build the second request to fill our Reactive variable with more data to show you why it's great to have this distinct output using this reactive variable. And in this example, we're just basically saying it's really good to use reactive to group together information when you're receiving data from an API. So let's go ahead and look through here. And we have a title right here for the Pokemon index. And then we have the select right here. In the select, we have it connected with a V model. And this V model is connected to Pokemon name, which is connected to this ref variable. So this ref variable is handling all of our input. And right now it has a Bulbasaur that's hard coded in there, which basically makes our initial request to the API using this Axio get request. Um, so here's the API link. And then we insert using a template literal, this Bulbasaur value. And then it gives us all of Bulbasaur's data. Um, and then after that, we say dot then we get the response and we call fill data. Just like the tax application, we have a fill data function and we insert the data as a parameter. And when we go to fill data right here, we go ahead and here's our uh, Pokemon reactive variable, which has a name, an image URL, and an abilities uh, array. And in fill data, we accept the parameter of data, and then we go ahead and input that data right here. So here's the name. Um, we also capitalize the first letter right here by using this function called capitalize first letter. Um, basically, it takes the uh, character at the first position, capitalizes it, then it slices the string, and then it pens them together, concatenates the, uh, the string to go ahead and just reassemble Bulbasaur with the capital letter. And then we have the image URL. So we basically search through the data for the data.sprites, and we get the front default image URL. And that allows us, it's basically a link, and we just put that link here into our image source which allows us to display a sprite and then we want to display the skills and to do that we have this for loop right here so let item and data dot abilities data dot abilities is all the abilities that is in the object that we're receiving from the data and we go ahead and we just go ahead and say pokemon dot abilities dot push you see right here here's pokemon here's abilities and then we're going to push to this array right here and then we take all of the information from the object that we, that we receive from the data and we fill it by pushing it into this array. Now here's a little bit of a weird part. You will see that we say Pokemon.abilities equals empty array. And the reason that we have to do that is because when we switch, um, we'll demonstrate this in a second, but when we go ahead and switch Pokemon, we'll just keep adding abilities, um, but we go ahead and reset it to an empty array so we can just get the abilities of that Pokemon. So let's go ahead and write the second request um, using a watch function to then make the second request so we can go ahead and change this to different Pokemon and show why it's really great to have this ref for input and then this reactive for the output. So we're gonna go ahead and start creating our watch um, function. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna track Pokemon name. So every time Pokemon name changes, right now it's Bulbasaur, but every time we go into the select right here, and you'll see right here, we have a bunch of different options, Bulbasaur, Ditto, Charmander. Um, whenever we change it, it changes the ref variable to whatever these names are. And we want to be able to watch for that. So whenever it changes, we're gonna make another Axios get request to get the data and do exactly what we already did. We're gonna fill the data into this reactive um, variable, and then it's gonna switch all the information in this Pokemon index. So let's go to watch and we're gonna say we wanna track Pokemon name. And it's gonna be async because we're making an API call. And we're gonna say new Pokemon name. So we don't have new Pokemon name anywhere else in the application. It's basically specifically to this watch function that we're making right now. And it's just saying, hey, here's the original. And every time it changes, we're gonna input that changed value right here automatically. And we're gonna make an arrow function. And then we're gonna go ahead and write our logic right here. 
So we're gonna say await, and we're gonna wait for this Axios get request. We're gonna say Axios get, and we're gonna go ahead and get this API link right here. Again, it's the link, and then we're appending on the uh, new value. But in this case, we're not gonna be doing Pokemon name dot value. Um, we just wanna be very explicit because we already are getting the new value right here. We're gonna say new Pokemon name. And then we'll write our dot then part. We're gonna get the response. And then we're gonna take that response and put it back into fill data. And do response dot data to put that data into the fill data function. And after every time we change Pokemon name, it should update the data on the screen. So let's go ahead and save it and test this out. Ditto. All right, so we see received Ditto, Charmander, Squirtle, and Blastoise. And that just makes it super easy because we know that we're receiving all the input right here and then we're inputting the output into this Pokemon reactive variable right here. And then I'm gonna show you why real quickly why we have this Pokemon.abilities reset right here just in case you wanted to know. Um, because if you look, see, see this um, skills area just keeps on building and the reason is because we don't have, we just push it to that array. So we just reset it right here and it doesn't do that anymore and we can go ahead and just look through all the Pokemon. And that just makes it very clear that we're saying, hey, this is the user input. And then every time we get the user input and it changes, we want to input it into this API using this watch function and we'll fill that data into this Pokemon reactive variable. So we know exactly that, hey, this is the input that's connected to the ref and this part is the output that's connected to the reactive variable. And that's why reactive variables are great for receiving API data because you can just organize it right here. And whenever you're outputting that data to the screen, you can just call Pokemon dot whatever the property name is. And it keeps it really nice and organized. All right, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button. And as well, I'm building a website called View Reference. It has blogs, well, it will have blogs soon. Um, we're also building a free course if you're interested. So go ahead and you know submit your email if you're interested in a free course on View 3. It shows you all the fundamentals. And it's not out yet, it will be out um, relatively soon in a couple of months. And we also have documentation, which I will link to in the description, linking to the documentation that is specific to this video. Um, specifically, we have a ref and reactive documentation showing you what you need to know about ref and reactive and how to use it. We also have a little bit more, it's not completely finished, but a little bit more about reactivity and state. And then we also have other parts like vModel, which we use a lot in this example. And then we also talked about event handling, which uh, uses the click handler, which we also have an article about. So I'm going to go ahead and link all of those articles. Um, and if you, as well, if you have something else you want to figure out, we have a search thing. You can go through and search for whatever topic you're trying to figure out um, about. All right. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye.